was evening when I started this, but it's even more evening, evening. It's now really dark outside. Did that sentence make sense? No. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of the Tackle Your TBR Readathon. For those of you that don't know, the Tackle Your TBR Readathon is a bi-monthly readathon that's all about resting, relaxing, and you might as well tackle your TBRs while you're at it. It's super chilled. I do this over 24 hours, but I do sleep because I cannot go without my sleep. Other people choose to do it on a different day or choose to turn it into a week or a month long readathon, whatever works for them. I do have announcement videos and a playlist for every previous Taku TBR readathon. It's been going on for a little while now. It started off as something that I was just doing just for myself to make sure I remembered to take one day for myself just to relax and read because I would get so caught up and be so busy doing everything else I just wouldn't and I'd burn myself out. This was the reminder I needed and it became popular so here we are. But anyway I hope you enjoy this. We're going to be doing lots of reading in this vlog. It's just going to be over the 24 hours. I'm starting it a little bit early because I'm starting it on Friday evening. It's almost four o'clock of an evening. But that is because Sunday I'm actually doing an early shift so I need to be making sure that I'm going to bed early on Saturday. So there's no point me starting it Saturday morning because I can't finish it Sunday morning because I'll be at work. But right, anyway, getting straight into it. What am I planning on reading across these 24 hours? Well, we have quite a chunky stack. So I do have my prompts and I'll go through them but I've also got an extra book and we'll just see how it all goes. So the first one that I really want to start off with is A Restless Truth. This is by Freya Mars and I think this is fulfilling the prompt of continue a series although you can change that prompt to continue a book you're already in the middle of. Like I say this is flexible and you do what you want with it. It's more to keep me accountable. But yeah so continue a series. I've decided to go with A Restless Truth I need a bit of a pick-me-up. The last book I finished reading earlier today was a part of my weekly reading vlog which would have been out before this. Now I was reading Suzumi and this book upsets me all the time. It's based on the film so the producer of the film wrote this book at the exact same time and that film made me cry and this book gave me the same emotions. I need something that's light and happy and fun and I feel like Arrest's Truth is going to give me that. This one I believe is set on a boat. We have a bit of a murder mystery going on and it is is continuing on from A Marvelous Light but we're following different main characters. So really looking forward to getting back into this world, the magic system. I really like the setting because we're set in, I think it was London, well obviously this one's taking place on a ship so it's going to be different setting but the first one was London in about I think it was the Edwardian time period so I really like the time period that it was set in so yeah looking forward to this. But then I have obviously the rest of the books to get to and these are kind of a mixture of things. So one that wasn't on my TBR at all is Solo Leveling Volume 2. This is my partner's. He's massively into Solo Leveling and has finally convinced me to start reading the manoir. So this is going to be Volume 2 and this will be a nice just break up all the other books and novels that I'm reading. So hopefully get into that. Then I have three more that were part of the actual TBR for this day. Uh, we have The Wind in the Willows which I believe Leaf was for a book I keep putting off and this is one I definitely want to read. This is by Kenneth Graham and it's a children's classic book that I just haven't read. It's really short, it's less than 200 pages so I've got no excuse. So I want to make sure this is high priority for me, this is the top priority. Then we have Lips Touch by Lanny Taylor. This is fulfilling the prompt of just to read anything on your TBR and this is a collection of three short stories all about the deliciousness of wanting and waiting for that moment when lips touch. So I'm intrigued for that and I also think short story collection again to break up the day tomorrow would be nice. I could start my day off with one then do so like I haven't decided how I'm going to do that. The one I think I'm not going to get to is Dante's Circles of Hell. This is a little excerpt from Dante's bigger poem Inferno. I have been putting this off for absolutely ages. I attempted to read Dante's Inferno but I, I didn't get far into it. I found the writing style a bit difficult to grasp. This is the one that honestly I shouldn't put off. This is fulfilling the prompt of read the shortest book on your TV or just read a short book but I I do keep putting this one off a lot. I'm just intimidated by it. This is only 50 pages long so I should definitely give this one a try but we'll see whether I actually get round to finishing it or not. I don't know. I feel like this is the least likely one to happen. 
as I said, the one I'm going to be starting off with is a Restless Truth. I'm really, really feeling this. So I am going to make myself a hot drink and I'm going to curl up starting this book. I'm so excited for this one. So yeah, I'm going to just get straight into it and let's just kick off this readathon straight away, trying to keep this intro short. I'm atrocious for doing long intros. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this Taco TBR readathon if you decided to take part. If not, I still hope that you managed to get at least one day for yourself to rest and relax and do a little bit of reading or any of your other hobbies. So I hope you managed to get a bit of time for yourself and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. So let's just get straight to it. It's not been long at all. I don't know actually, what's the time? Oh okay, so it's 26 past five. I didn't start reading straight away though. I had to update my reset video and did my tea and everything. Anyway, the point is I'm at page 30 of A Restless Truth, but I'm really hungry. So I'm gonna stop and go eat some food. I'll probably read a bit while I'm cooking. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hungry. So I'm gonna do some food. First initial impressions of A Restless Truth though. Really fun, really entertaining. We're following Maud, who is Robin's sister, who we meet in the first book. In the first book, we are following Robin and Edwin Robin has no knowledge of magic existing, Edwin does, and Robin needs a job. So he starts working for the government and they put him in the magic part. Edwin is his kind of like mentor person to teach him what the hell magic is and what's going on with all of that. And there's a mystery and a lot of different things going on. It's continued in this second book. The story is following two different characters. The first one we've met so far is Maud, Robin's sister. She is aware of magic because she got involved a little bit towards the end of the first book, A Marvelous Light, and now we are continuing on that plot line. So the way it kind of works is in that first book you kind of had a murder mystery element going on and that murder mystery got wrapped up but there is a bigger plot afoot and in this book we have had a murder straight away that was in the very first chapter and it's tied in with that bigger plot so I imagine Maud is going to try and solve it. Well she's already said that she wants to solve it and then that will also progress the bigger overarching plot which will go on. I think there is three books or is it four books out? I'm not sure. I think it's three. Yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying this so far. I really like the mood of the book, the tone of it all. Maud as a character is someone that's just starting to push out against boundaries and starting to kind of find herself as someone that's always kind of struggled in her mother's shadow. Just the way like the relationship with her mom and that it wasn't that great. You get a lot of that in this first bit. Just kind of like the feeling that things weren't right there. It has been a while since I've read the first book and I probably could have done with rereading the first one before I went into this or at least done a recap but I haven't. So I'm pretty sure the relationship with the parents and then Robin and Maud was discussed in that first book. Book, but you're seeing it more from Maud's perspective and realising how cold and everything her mum was and how it's kind of left her not really prepared for things and this is the first time that she's trying out and doing something on her own really rather than always being protected by her brother. This is really good, I'm really intrigued. Maud is determined to find out what's going on and who's killed Mrs Newbury which we know straight away it's not, not a surprise we actually have it on the back and also in the first chapter and she's determined to find out who's done it all the other things that are associated with the bigger plot which I won't talk about but yeah I I'm enjoying it I think it's everything I wanted it to be it's got that light-hearted tone to it but also a mystery to keep you engrossed I am starving so I'm going to stop do some cooking I'll read a little bit while I'm cooking and then go from there but I would like to make it to maybe like page 100 this evening that would be really good and then then we'll see I feel like playing a bit of Animal Crossing or things I don't know we'll see I should just be focusing on reading but at least page 100 is the goal. But first, let's go cook.
then I am feeling rather tired. I mean, it was evening when I started this, but it's even more evening, evening. It's now really dark outside. Did that sentence make sense? No. But it is now 8, 19. And I have read a little bit more. I have read up to chapter 12, page 106 of Arrest's Truth. And I'm really loving this. Also, you know how I said I needed a recap for the first book? We got that. Literally five pages later, we had a recap where Maud was talking about what happened in the first book, how she came to know about magicians, why it's so important that she finds out the person that murdered Miss Newbury. Is it New? I feel like I keep saying the name wrong. But yeah, f um, find out who murdered her and the things that have gone missing and everything to do with the further plot line. Like she has to explain it to these two other characters. Our second perspective is Violet who is a magician. She doesn't have loads of skill as a magician but she is returning from America back to England and there's lots of scandal surrounding her and I really enjoy her perspective. It's really fun and fresh and it's a nice duo seeing these two pair up together and try and investigate everything. Violet's along for the ride, she just wants the fun of it all rather than because she actually cares about what's happening and obviously Maud is a lot more invested. But it's really fun. It was also really good like re get into grips with the magic system and the fact that it's like um scratch cradle like I don't know if you've ever played it as kids where you had like the string between two hands and you had to like do shapes with the string probably makes no sense but I, it was my childhood is what I grew up playing and the magic system is based around that although there are differences like with Violet spending time in America she's learnt how they use rings and things and how it all works together so it's really interesting and really fun I like being back into it I don't feel like I'm missing obviously I'm missing some of the particulars and things but I feel like I know enough that I'm fine to get to grips with it I think the recap did a good job and I'm enjoying the mystery of it all I've been thinking about it because I've been thinking about would I count this as a cozy murder mystery and to be honest it's more a historical romance with a bit of mystery and fantasy thrown in so I feel like it's more romance focused than anything else but I really like that and talking of romance I like seeing Maud discover herself and her preferences I have 280 pages left to go of this book and I'm thinking I would like to read probably another 50 pages tonight that would be really good if I could do that however I'm thinking to take a little bit of a break and I'm undecided this hair is just sticking up all over the place anyway I'm undecided I'm thinking I could do one of the short stories from Lips Tut we have do we have a contents page we do so the first one is Goblin Fruit and this one is 56 pages long so I feel like we could definitely do that and then maybe 50 pages of Restless Truth and then that would be quite nice for this evening probably take me about an hour each to do so that'll put me at like 10 o'clock but just a side note loving the artwork in here I really like that about Lips Touch. There's lots of like little illustrations throughout the book. So I think this is going to be really nice to read. I did say that I wanted this to break up my reading. And I feel like this would be a nice way to just break up what I've read. Because the thing that I have with these readathons. So I love doing them and I love reading all day. I absolutely adore it. I and mean, obviously I'm doing it across two days but within 24 hours anyway. I do find that if I read one book with no breaks I find it harder to take the information in. It helps with doing these updates because I'm stopping every so often to tell you what's happened and that helps me keep in mind everything that's going on but say for example a recent book I read really really quickly is House of Flame and Shadow and I read that book across two days and that's like a 900 page book. I read it all in such a short period of time that while I can tell you the overarching plot of it all and I will remember some things but the intricate details of it all are fled <laughs> because I didn't get that time to percolate in my thoughts and feelings about the book in between so that's why I'm trying to break it up with different things and I feel like a short story is really good for that because it's a self-contained story it's not like I'm going between two different books in one day I mean I am but I don't know this doesn't make sense I felt like I was trying to go somewhere with this and it just didn't work if you understand what I mean amazing if not I don't blame you because I've kind of confused myself with where I'm going with this because I do read a couple of books on the go all the time it's just normally it's spread out over days rather than it condensed into a short period of time and it's that condensed reading time that I find I then forget more things of the book apart from my general feelings towards it I guess that's what I'm trying to say and then with breaking it up with a short story it's like its own self-contained thing so it's fine to read in a short amount of time because obviously it's a short story that's the point of 
of it. And so to put Ressa's Truth down, to then pick up a short story, to then go back to Ressa's Truth will be okay. I'll probably still take a break in between doing that because even before updating this, I actually stopped reading at eight and I just spent the last like 15 minutes just messing around on my phone just to have a little bit of a break before going into whatever I pick up next. Um, and I'll probably do that. I'll probably do maybe 50 pages of Ressa's Truth because I'm really enjoying it. Then take a break and maybe go on my Switch. I'm feeling my Switch or I have a video queued up that I want to watch on YouTube, which is Melissa Verse. She's a animal, I mean, she does more than Animal Crossing, but I watch her Animal Crossing content. She's an Animal Crossing YouTuber and I adore it because obviously I'm back in my Animal Crossing phase. She's got a video that I've queued up, so I might watch that to have a break or I might play it on my Switch. I have Cozy Grove, thanks to Morgan over at Discord, which I am enjoying. It's a nice, cute game. It's not one I play for too long either. It's probably one I play for about 40 minutes and then that's enough for me. Or Animal Crossing, but then sometimes I get sucked into that game. Sometimes I can do an hour on there and I'm fine. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's cool. That's enough for me. And other times I'm like three hours later, where has the time gone? So it will depend on my mood. But the point that I was making is I was just coming on to let you know that I'd got to the 100 page mark of this and I'm really happy with it, really enjoying it. I like where the mystery's going and that I'm thinking about picking up a short story just as a bit of a mix. Although I have now decided to continue on with this instead then have a break away from reading for like an hour and then maybe read a short story before bed, depending on how tired I'm feeling. I think that's gonna be the plan. Also, this is gonna be the last update of today because shortly enough, people will be getting ready for bed and I do not like filming when everyone's in bed. That's enough ramblings for me. I think you can tell I'm getting tired because I get even more rambly than normal and I'm naturally a rambler when it comes to updating you guys about stuff because it's just what I do. I feel like it's talking to friends and that is just constantly what I do. I just ramble. I have verbal diarrhea and I don't know how to stop. Which, speaking of that, that was not a really nice visual, so maybe we should just go. <laughs> anyway, right, I am gonna go. I'll see you in the morning. I do plan on reading in the morning, so I'm actually gonna be getting up early, probably about seven, but I don't plan on getting out of bed at seven, unless of course I'm hungry. But I plan on reading in bed for an hour and I'm not sure what I'm gonna start off with. I might do more of Restless Truth, depending on where I leave it and how into it I get. I might choose to do another short story. I could choose to do the manoir. Who knows? I do really want to read The Wind in the Willows and I feel like that'd be a nice way to start the morning. But I'm also dubious about reading this and The Wind in the Willows at the same time because The Wind in the Willows is a 200 page book and I feel like I'm not gonna be able to finish both. But I also feel like if I keep putting off The Wind in the Willows, I'm never gonna read that book. So I feel like I should pick up that book tomorrow morning. So it means I might not finish this across the readathon, but that's fine. I mean, even if I just get halfway through it, that's absolutely fine because at least I can finish Wind in the Willows. That is the priority. I've had that book for ages and I keep putting it off and it's been on so many TBRs and I just haven't read it. And there's no reason not to like it because it's a cute, whimsical classic about animals. What's not to like about that? I'm still rambling. This has now gone on for 10 minutes. I do apologize. I will go and I will see you in the morning. And I guess you're about to get a load of B-roll of whatever I actually do. I feel like I was meant to decide and I haven't really decided what I'm doing. We're just gonna go with it. You'll get the B-roll and I'll see you in the morning. Morning. It is turning into quite the dreary day outside, which is perfect for reading in my opinion. I am very happy to stay curled up at home with plenty of hot drinks and a good book. Although I am actually in the middle of three books because I did decide to start the short story collection and this morning I spent a little bit of time reading as well. So let's just get straight into all the reading updates that I've got. So the most recent book I spoke to you about is A Restless Truth and I read a tiny bit more last night. I'm now up to chapter 14, 
like page 123. I think I read like two more chapters and I'm really, really enjoying this. I actually really want to get to reading this next. I, I just, I'm loving it. And while I might not get it finished today, I'm having such good fun with this because I just think it's got such a humorous tone to the book that is really just fun and engaging but also makes it a really light quick read as well. I don't know there's just something about this book where I'm constantly thinking about it when I'm not reading it so I definitely want to read more of this today because I think I'm going to start with this one after this update. There was a whole scene in this book that while didn't add anything to the plot mystery element of it just added to the bond building between our different characters and it was so much fun. I'm also really thinking about the third book and who that could potentially be following and I feel like it could be following a side character we've met in both books now and I'm really intrigued about their backstory so I feel like it would be really good to have a book about them so I'm hoping the third book is about them I don't actually know this is just me yeah, thinking out loud about it all but yeah I'm just oh, I'm loving this book it's so fun obviously as you can tell because I haven't stopped thinking about it and talking about it and I want to read it next so clearly I'm having a good time with that one but I did break it up with reading the first short story in Lips Touch which was Goblin Fruit I feel like. Yes, Goblin Fruit and I loved it. You saw the illustrations in this book, it is absolutely gorgeous. This book itself by Lani Taylor, so Lani Taylor is a really, I want to say they're one of my favourite authors but that's not strictly true. The author that I've read, everything they've written, very much enjoyed it. The Strange the Dreamer duology is one of my favourite. first book is absolutely gorgeous. It is so beautifully written. Definitely peak Lani Taylor's writing. And then their previous trilogy, which was started off with Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I really enjoyed at the age when I was reading it, which was during my teenage years, and I thought it was really good. This one, it kind of feels like it's a bit of both. It's definitely a young adult, and I think the writing style leans a little bit more towards Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but it's so engaging and it's so sensuous as well, which I really am enjoying. So in the first one, Goblin Fruit, we're following in our main character Kizzy as she lives well her family's very eccentric and she's constantly wanting to be like other girls wanting to be normal and in this book that sort of wanting is very very dangerous I thought it was a really good short story definitely something that could be expanded upon and I would be interested in it being expanded upon but that's what I like about short stories they're like ideas I liked the descriptions in here it was done very seductively in the descriptions and the way that she was wanting and everything and I really liked it. It kind of blended fairy tale with Lanny Taylor's writing and that was really beautiful to see. I definitely want to see if the rest of the books are more fairy tale leaning or whether it was only that one but it really did feel like a darker fairy tale cautionary story and it was really well done. So that was 53 pages long I think it was. 54 pages long for that story um, and it was very good. I really enjoyed it. I do want to read the rest of them but there is still like I think it was 200 pages left of this book to go so we'll see if I actually manage to at least read the next one I'm hoping which is spicy little curses such as these and this is about 80 pages long from what I remember so we'll see if I manage to get to that. I had a really nice slow wake up this morning I set my alarm for seven o'clock I need to be getting up earlier anyway because I'm on my early shifts tomorrow. I set alarm for seven and started reading about half seven and I read for an hour before getting myself ready and the book I picked up was The Wind in the Willows so I I've read the first three chapters. I'm now up to chapter four, page 53. And this is really cute and cozy. I can understand why it's a children's classic. It is really enchanting. So we're following Mole. Our main character is Mole and Mole has had enough of spring cleaning and goes running off to the river and discovers someone called rat who is a water rat and then starts discovering life by the river and it was really nice really fun and you meet a few different characters and currently we have mole and rat stuck in the deep dark woods with well they call it the wild wood and they have just discovered mr badger's house and it's going to go on from there I really like this. I think it was really cute and comforting and cosy. Definitely a nice book to wake up to because it doesn't require too much thought. I mean, it's a children's story, so it's really easy to read. I'm thinking to read more of this with lunch because as much as this is a nice book, I don't think I could sit there and read all of it in one go like I could, but I think I would prefer to break this one up and just read in those quieter moments when I'm busy doing other things, but I can also read. So like busy making lunch, but I can read this at the same time and I 
won't miss loads of things and loads of details and stuff because it's such a simple easy read but yeah this is really cute and really fun though so I'm looking forward to reading more of this like I say I think I'm gonna break this up so that I read maybe another 50 pages at lunch and then I mean this book it is like 200 pages long so again I don't know how much of all of these books I'm going to read because I have about 200 pages left in all of them and if I could read 600 pages today I'd be really impressed if I could get these three finished but I don't know if that's possible so we'll see I mean like I said the next thing I want to do is actually get back to Restless Truth I'm really feeling this I want that humorous mystery solving romance that's going on and I, I really want to get to this so I think I'm gonna do myself some breakfast I'm gonna sit down and read a good chunk of this and then we'll see where the mood takes me but I'll definitely be picking up Wind in the Willows at lunchtime and just go from there. I, I don't know but it's definitely gonna be between these three books. I don't actually think I'm gonna get the other two read but I'm really happy with these three books. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I've got a really nice mix of genres and also just tone of books so I can go with whatever I'm in the mood for. Whether I actually finish a book in this readathon, I don't know. I mean if I could I would like to finish Wind in the Willows today. I feel like Wind in the Willows would be a really nice one to finish in one day. But, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, anyway, I've rambled for long enough. My stomach is growling at me, so it's definitely time to go get some food. And then we're going to curl up and read. I mean, I literally don't have any other plans. I was going to go out of the house for a little bit today. However, if it starts raining, I think I'm just going to enjoy being inside. Have the window open, listen to the rain while I'm reading, and that sounds like a really nice day. I am a homebody at heart, so I may not leave the house today. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. See how I'm feeling. Anyway, I'm still rambling. Let's go. It, but I have actually moved. I've just come back over here after chilling out on my bed and reading. I have been reading a good chunk of A Restless Truth. I'm now up to chapter 23, page 234. I've read just over 100 pages and I'm really enjoying it. We're now at the point of a bit of conflict between Violet and Maud, which, you know, I kind of expected. This is more of a romance book than anything else, as much as, yes, it does have the mystery element to it and we have magical elements to it. This is at heart a romance book and so of course we're having that kind of third act conflict going on. It does seem a kind of bit insta-lovey but not really. It's more of an exploration of lust and exploring one's sexuality rather than anything further developing feelings. I feel like the feelings of love is the slow burn of it, but exploring sexuality, that's happened quite fast, especially because this has taken place over just a few days while they're on this ship. So I think it's been like three days and I feel like this book's doing a good exploration of that and showing how, especially in society at the time, how it was very frowned upon Pond for women to be exploring their own desires and this book is really exploring that and it's funny in places kind of more tense in places where they're having arguments and things because you do in these sort of situations like especially when you're first exploring things and there's lots of other factors and lots of misunderstandings going on and I think it's really good I think it's really well done I'm really enjoying it so I feel like I've left it at a good point where they've had a little bit of a conflict we've had progress in terms of the mystery some of that is a bit convenient but as as I said this is more of a romance book rather than a mystery book so some of those plot elements are a bit convenient again I don't mind I'm reading this for the fun because I really liked the first book and the second book is doing just as good of a job I do think I prefer the first book but I feel like this one is more humorous and so it's a lot more funny and light-hearted so I 
I honestly, I'm liking this series. I'm really looking forward to continuing on with it. But I am going to take a break for lunch. And as I said, with lunch, I want to read The Wind in the Willows. I think it's about half 12. Let me check. 12.24 at this moment in time. So I'm going to do some lunch. Probably spend an hour reading The Wind in the Willows. And then I'll probably end up going back to Restless Truth. I feel like I'm going to be finishing this today because I'm enjoying it so much. I don't think I'm going to read any more of Lips Touch. Instead, I'm going to focus on this book because I think this book, the way it's paced and everything, works for a quicker read like I know I spent a lot of time yesterday going on about how I don't want to binge read one whole book but I think because I have been breaking it up with different things it's fine for me I don't know I'm enjoying this so much and it's such a fast read I still have 150 pages to go though so we'll see what happens because that's probably going to take me about two and a half to three hours to read and if I'm finishing this at four o'clock as the time of when I started this readathon then technically I probably won't have time to do 50 pages of this and then finish this I, I don't know to be quite honest but maybe I'll extend it past four o'clock we'll, we'll see I do actually need to get myself ready for work I'll need to cook I'll need to pack my bag for tomorrow and all of this so I do need the evening free to get myself ready first things first let's go do some lunch I've got some sourdough bagels that I'm a bit obsessed with at the minute so I'm gonna have one of those, some eggs that need using up. So we're gonna put together a bagel, read a bit of this, and then decide from there. I am really compelled just to keep reading A Restless Truth. I think this is a really bingeable book. It's so easy to read. Anyway, right, I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm actually really, really hungry. So let's go do some food, change it up, read something cozy, maybe watch a bit of YouTube, and then potentially go back to this. feeling incredibly lazy right about now. It is 2.07 in the afternoon and I haven't read much actually. I read one chapter with lunch of Wind in the Willows so I'm now up to page 67 chapter 5. Very nice, very cute but I am feeling so incredibly lazy. I spent like 20 minutes just like scrolling on my phone, not really doing anything. Then I napped for a little bit. Like I have just been lazy. I started back up A Restless Truth. And when I say I started, I mean I read Paige and realized I really want cake. <laughs> Like I really would like to go out to, there's this cafe in Bromley, which is really nice. They do a really nice cheesecake. And I'm like, oh, that'd be really nice with a cup of tea. But by the time I make it there, and then back again. I was like, I don't really want to go that far, to be honest. So I'm thinking, let's go out to the local food shop and go find some cake. And then we can do a cup of tea and then read more of this. And I think I'm going to do some reading, I suppose, sprints of like two hours or something. So that I can probably almost finish the book in that time. This is really what I want to read. Like I started, like I said, I read a chapter of Wind in the Willows with lunch. And it was really nice. It was good. It was nice to have a little break away from the rest of the truth. But I just keep thinking about this book and I just keep wanting to go back to it. So I think A Wind in the Willows is going to be finished probably in like next week's reading vlog or something. And I'm going to instead focus all my energies today on finishing A Restless Truth. And we'll finish this readathon when this is finished because I imagine it's actually going to take me past four o'clock. Especially popping out to the shop. So that's my plan because I'm, I'm just really enjoying this. I really want to see what's going on and what they're going to do because they've kind of found out who's behind everything. But we still have quite a chunk of the book left because they're still on this boat. And it's a bit complicated because they can't do magic in front of people. And of course like they're part of like upper society 
party and so they're playing by certain rules and it's it's funny it's good it's interesting it's high stakes i really want to see where it's going but i also need some sugar and as much as i've got some after eights here i'm feeling more like cake rather than mint chocolate you're gonna come with me we're gonna pop to the shops we're gonna see what cake they have we're gonna make a hot drink and we're gonna sit down and read this for a couple of hours and see whether we get this finished or not like it's to the point where i was thinking about playing animal crossing for an hour but i kind of don't want to because i just want to focus on reading this book like since starting this readathon i haven't actually played any animal crossing i think restless truth was the perfect readathon book because I'm so invested in what's going on. So yeah, I, I really want to focus on this and finish this and I don't really want to read anything else and I don't really want to do anything else. So on that note, let's go get some cake and finish this book. evening we are going to wrap up this reading vlog or daily vlog readathon what am i on about the tack your tbr readathon there we go it has now been just over 24 hours of reading i did start this at four o'clock it's now 17 minutes past five so technically we've done 25 hours since this started but i didn't actually start reading till almost five o'clock yesterday evening so technically just over 24 hours it's been a grand old time and i have finished a restless truth and my cheesecake was absolutely delicious in case anyone was wondering but that was absolutely lovely it was really needed as a nice little afternoon snack pick me up to get me through the rest of the day having a cup of tea and a cheesecake and finishing this book was a perfect way to end this day i'm really pleased with how it turned out and this book was so good i really enjoyed it it was very action-packed towards the end there was a lot of things happening i do think there is a slower part in the middle but that's kind of where the romance takes over and the bits that I was talking about where it's exploring sexuality and everything so I feel like there isn't a point where it's boring especially because I've been able to binge this within 24 hours it's been really easy to read really fun I think the pacing was really good I liked the mystery elements and I like the way the overarching plot line has been left to be picked up again in that third book which I really hope I get to this year rather than doing what I did with the first one having such a long wait between the two like I said the second book does actually recap the first book quite nicely but there are still points in that book which I wouldn't have remembered and so I mean I still think having a reread and then going into it probably would have been ideal but without it the recap did do well but I would like to go into the third book with not such a long wait so I don't have to go through that again because it'll be nice to have it all fresh is what I'm saying in a really long-winded way but yeah I really enjoyed this I really enjoyed the relationship that was being built it was good it was good fun all the points that I've already said about this book it held up towards the end and it was a very fast-paced ending but it wrapped up the mystery well it doesn't wrap up everything because as I said it does go into a third book but I feel like this one doesn't really suffer from second book syndrome which you can sometimes get in series where the second book just doesn't do quite as much because it still does progress the plot line it also stands on its own with its own mystery so I liked it I liked the way it all ended I thought it was really well done like I say some things were really convenient for the plot line but that's kind of expected um, and it doesn't bother me too much so yeah it was good the romance in these stories i forgot to mention are queer romances in the first book we have a male male romance in this book we have female female so it'll be really interesting to see what the third book's going to do but yeah this was really fun i'm really pleased that i read this i'm actually quite surprised i managed to read all 385 pages in one day that was really good it has meant that i haven't got to either solo Levin volume 2 or dante's inferno circles of hell pretty sure we knew i wasn't going to get to this one honestly i think this is going to be a case of if i don't get to it by the end of this year I might just let this go because I'm clearly not wanting to read it it's been on my TBR a couple of times and I've just not been interested in picking it up so 
it's fine. I, I'm not going to force myself to read this one. Solo Level in Volume 2 I will be reading soon though because my partner does want me to read the series and catch up and he likes talking to me about it so I'll definitely get to this one soon. It just wasn't today because I was so invested in A Restless Truth instead. But this is a good fun manoir but like I say I'll talk about I mean I spoke about it because I read the first volume in the weekly vlog that came out just before this video and I'll probably get to this before the month is up. And other than that I have started two different books that hopefully I'll manage to finish by the end of the month. We have The Wind in the Willows which I haven't read any further than where I left it which is chapter 5 page 67. A really cute cozy read. I definitely want to finish this one soon. I think it would be a fun one to take to work maybe, read on my lunch breaks at work because it's a really easy one I can easily pick up and put down so if I get interrupted in my work lunch break it doesn't matter. So I might do that actually but I've only got 120 or is it 140? About 150 pages left to go of this book so it's not too bad. So hopefully, no what am I saying? 130 mathing is not working right now. Try again. It's 130 pages left of this book to go so it's not going to take long so it might be one that I end up taking to work at some point. You'll see it in a future reading vlog regardless and hopefully get that done by the end of the month. And then we have the short stories from Lips Touch which I've got two short stories left and I did really enjoy the first one, Goblin Fruit. As we know I really liked the writing style. It was very seductive and really portrayed that yearning and quality of being a teenage girl and wanting to be different wanting to be someone else, wanting to look a certain way and be a certain person and just being stuck in that teenage girl kind of transient sense of yourself where you're not really sure who you are and you're trying to learn and find yourself and that kind of wanting and how it led down a darker path for our main character Kizzy. So this was really good. I do want to read the other two. Again I would like to say by the end of the month but I do have quite a bit left on my February TBR. I still have one, two, four books on my February TBR plus trying to finish The Wind and the Willows. So we'll see if I also manage to squeeze in Lips Touch. If not, it will be one that I dip in and out of over the coming months because I do like it and it will be nice to pick up a short story every so often. But yeah, I think overall this readathon day has been a success. I have really enjoyed it. It's been really relaxing, like to the point where I have napped very briefly once and almost napped again because I've been so chilled. I don't know if anyone else finds that but when you have such a relaxing day it's so easy to just fall asleep. Like it's been it's been great and I'm quite pleased I started the readathon earlier than what I thought so I still have this evening because it's not too late in the evening. I will be leaving it here for this video. I hope this video has just served as that reminder to you know have a nice chilled reading day and it's absolutely okay to take a day for yourself. It is really really important and that's what these readathons are all about and while we do put the prompts in and stuff for a little bit of like extra focus for some people that feel like because I'm one of those people where I feel like I needed to do this and to feel like I've accomplished something and so by having prompt that I can tick off is really nice which to prove how the prompts work by the way just just to show that you can mix it in any way you want technically I fulfilled all of them with just this one book because this one serves as a reader book of your TBR continuing a series or a book you're in the middle of I mean reading a short book I suppose it doesn't do and a book I keep putting off this one I haven't had for too long either so I suppose it doesn't work for those but it's the point that you don't need to fulfill them but at the same time just by dipping into these two it fulfills that because I read a short story which was only 50 pages long so that's a short book and also I started a book I keep putting off so it's really flexible I like having the prompts just because I feel a bit more accomplished you don't need to use them just take this as a reminder to enjoy your day have a little bit of time for yourself whatever you want to do but this was really nice and really relaxing thank you to everyone that's been taking part on discord it's been really fun to chat with you all over there and anyone that's taken part but not on discord or things I just hope you've enjoyed it or anyone that's just watched this video again I hope you've enjoyed it I think I've covered everything and I'm now rambling so I'm gonna stop and leave it there and thank you so so much for watching and if you've made it this far or you just don't know what you would like to comment then maybe leave a flower and I'm going to leave it there so once again thank you so so much for watching I really appreciate each and every single one of you that takes the time to watch these videos it really does mean a lot if you have enjoyed this video please do consider giving it that thumbs up subscribe and commenting. Those three things really do help this channel grow. My social media links, anyone I've mentioned, will always be linked below and I will of course catch you in the very next video.